Another round of applause. Let's give Lisa a round of applause for her great time on stage. Listen, Lisa is loud and she's proud and she's out here doing a darn thing. High five, Lisa. So proud of you. Alright, so if you're just now coming in, the Breeze Convention is not over just yet. We're gonna bring the girl on the stage. She is the moderator for today's channel and she's from the DCA Fortune in Crypto Education. So without further ado, let's give a round of applause for the boy. Yeah, that's my friend. How you doing? You look good, friend. I'm happy to have a seat right here. And then obviously we're going to bring up the next guest as well, Donna Mitchell, who is the CEO and founder of Mitchell Universal Network, LLC. That's what I'm talking about. Boom. Y'all going to take it away. Have a good time. I like to call it a passion. I can be sitting and relaxed. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Welcome, welcome. So let's talk here about the lady that we're about to celebrate within the blockchain today. So the blockchain revolution is here and women are at the forefront. We are not sitting on the sidelines anymore. We're leading the charge in business innovation. This panel discusses and we do a deep dive into the world of the blockchain, explore, exploring its potentials to transform industries, create new business models, and drive economic growth. That's making some money, folks. That's what we have to do. So our panelists today are pioneers in their own rights. Let's go ahead and get started today. Welcome, ladies. Thank you, Deborah. No, yep, there we go, it's on now, thank you. Hi, everybody. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Now, one of the things that you said, Lisa, while we're getting started, and I want to piggyback on what you just did. You were talking about the blockchain and security and safety. I'm going to get to the questions here, but I want to talk about this first. So I heard someone, and this was just a couple of days ago, on a podcast, and what he said was, I don't have to worry about my crypto because I have two-factor authentication. Ladies, tell me what's wrong with that statement. Well, I guess that takes one vector out of maybe a hundred out of the picture. So someone can't take his cryptos quite so easily because he's got 2FA. But they can still see his entire transaction history. They can see, still see everything he owns, everything he does. Like, that's not good. Everything. So if you want to keep what you have worked so hard for, then we better listen to Lisa here from The Secret Network. So let's go ahead and get started, ladies. I am so excited to get this information here from you guys. Um, so the first thing that I want to know is how has the blockchain impacted your business, your life as a whole? I'll start. Uh, I left PayPal because they weren't getting into blockchain in 2017. And I must say that I did not know what I was getting into. I joined a company where I was one woman out of 55 employees. And it was a bro culture to the extreme. So I thought PayPal was a little patriarchal at the time, one of the reasons I left it. But I didn't know I was jumping out of the fire frying pan into the fire. So I've been in here in this industry for six years. I've worked with a lot of men. I've experienced a lot of, I would say, trauma because of the, the attitudes of people in this industry where they think that they are the smartest person in the entire universe because they bought Bitcoin early and now they have a lot of money. So blockchain has definitely affected me in good and bad ways, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm here today because I believe in the future of what blockchain can do. I want to see it come about in the best way possible, which is why I'm working on privacy. And uh, this is my life now. Fantastic. Well, you said something interesting. You said the trauma that you have. And as women, we do face trauma in this industry that is so male dominated. But I'm so happy to see that you fought your way through it. Donna, can you answer that question? Well, I can definitely add to that, uh, to my business. My business has definitely changed as a digital solutions company. It's been a positive impact. Uh, my background is in electronic ticketing, high-end on the airline side, so my client, this was $7.2 billion. 
but that is back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, as you went into the IVR systems, uh, the chaos at the airport, electronic ticketing, uh, maybe some of the uh, human remains shipping in Unabama. I'm the turnaround business process improvement re-engineering gap. Um, as I went through my career uh, and then moved into the pharmaceutical side, of course I learned a lot about, you know, uh, the supply chain and things like that and sampling and pharmaceuticals and, and moved on, but my business was really in the Web2 space. I just recently came into this space um, in the last year. And in the last year, it's made a very positive change for my consultant business because first I was working with health and wellness and beauty in regards to proprietary products and building organizations and, and, and a business development consultant. But as I learned about NFT, um, I learned about NFT from Tirza. Tirza is a continuum with um, Adrian Ashley. And I learned about NFTs, and I didn't know anything about Web3. had no idea until I learned about NFTs. And once I started focusing on Web3 and everything it was doing, everything that it could mean to society, everything that it could change in a positive way, there's always gonna be bad actors, we know that. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of positives to it. So once I understood what was happening with the blockchain and the Bitcoin and the NFTs and the transfer of value and how to use this and how to look at a project and what it could do with Unbank and everything else, it was a positive impact because now I'm back in position and out of retirement. Now I'm going on 69 in about two weeks. So I'm really here wow. to say anybody can do this, anybody can learn this, but you just have to apply it and bring it down some, the way we communicate about it, so people understand what they're doing in best practices, what they're doing in their marketing plans. You just look at the technology and bring it into that and bring the elements and technologies of Web3 into what you did in your legacy systems. And it could be a very happy marriage if more people knew that point. You know, you led me right into my next question because so few people know and understand the industry and certainly don't understand the importance. So the thing that comes to mind for both of you ladies is what was, what was it like, your mindset that said, hey, this is something that I should get into and I should spend a lot of time and I should become the subject matter experts that you are today. What was that like for you to decide, yeah, let me go ahead and do this? Well, uh, honestly, what happened was I was into trading, I was trading options and, and futures, and, and my husband said, hey, you should look at Bitcoin. And I'm like, no, that's for, that's for nerds. Oh, I don't want to be a nerd. <laughs> and he said, no, I think you'd like it. So I started trading it, and that's how I got hooked, because there, were, there was so much volatility, and I could trade and make a lot of money, and it was really fun. And that turned into, honestly, what happened, Deborah, was I was working at PayPal, and I was getting home from work, and I was trading on BitMEX all night, and then going to work the next day. There was no time for sleep in there. So I finally decided, okay, I'm gonna take a job at BitMEX and actually work there, because I can't do this anymore. So that's, what, that's my journey, how I ended up here. Wow. Well. I didn't make no money in Bitcoin, let me tell you that right now. So at the end of the day, we just keep it real. I'm one of the people that miss Intel, you know, back when Intel and the chips and semiconductors and everything were just coming about. And I swore I was not going to miss it this time. Once I started understanding what was happening, why it was happening, the Bitcoin was happening, Ethereum, then I started learning Solana and then everybody else, Polkadot and, the, and, and what each blockchain might do, not do, and everything else. I decided I needed to get in the middle of the mix and be in the technology side like I was back in the day um, on the leading of the technology because airlines, a lot of people didn't realize back then, we were the first on computers. So that's why we always had carpal tunnel. We had a lot of arthritis issues. You know, anybody you met that was in reservations back in the 70s, they had a lot of issues. And then with that being said, I figured, well, electronic ticking was my last biggest product just before 9-11. This would bring me back on the technology. So I really came into it, moving through that journey. And now I'm in a space where I can help teach, help people learn, share, 
through the podcast and through my consulting company, help the businesses and point them in the right direction and kind of bring it down a little bit. I mean, you haven't made money in Bitcoin yet. <laughs> okay, that's true. Depending when you got in, you get on a bumpy ride. I, I would have to concur with you. Yes, you have not made it yet. As long as you don't come out of the market, then you just have unrealized losses. They are only realized once you come out. So if that were the case, I'd be really sad right now. <laughs> but I've learned how to go in and, and, and dollar cost average in. So anyways, I digress. So let me ask you this. Um, it's, it's exciting to hear how people get into this space that's so unfamiliar to so many people, even today. I, I met a woman since we've been here, and she said that her business was going to start accepting crypto as payments. And her next response kind of blew my mind. She said, as soon as it comes in, every day I'm gonna have to cash it out. And I said, why? She said, I don't understand it and I'm afraid of it. What do you guys have to say about that? The fact that, 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 that someone would be that afraid of this beautiful space that we have within the blockchain, within cryptocurrencies. Oh, uh, there's so many people who are afraid. It's my mission right now to teach women how to do crypto because it's, it's just, it's terrifying. It's not good user experience and it's, it's very easy to make mistakes. But I will say that my doctor started accepting Bitcoin and he kept it. He, he was a, he's a forward thinker. He wanted to keep it. So honestly, I'm not sure that you should accept crypto if you're afraid of it. Maybe you, you just need to get a little more familiar with it first. Um, I, it is easy to make mistakes. So. That's a great point. I think from my perspective, um, there is a lot of fear or what some people call the scary when it comes to technology, computers, or anything that they're unfamiliar with. The main thing I could say is suggest that we open our minds, learn, adapt, and change. Because if we don't, we'll be left behind. Um, the fact that she's accepting it is a step forward. Um, she'll learn as she goes through the process to relax. But the pivoting to Web3 podcast is set up in a manner where we try to bring people on high level in projects, but maybe not so high level, but have experience in different backgrounds that embrace it and try to reflect on their journey, the positive, and the direction they're going and why they're in the Web3 space. So for me, um, the podcast was a way for me to contribute and get all hands on deck where we are in this crazy world, all hands need to get on deck one way or the other and go for it and be very positive with change. Those are great answers. Now let me ask you this, what challenges as women have the two of you faced um, being in the blockchain industry and how have you overcome them? I saw those looks. <laughs> she wants me to go first. Um, basically for me, since I'm old school, I'm the old G, OG of the OG, okay? I've been hanging around Earth around seven decades almost. Uh, I'm used to being in an environment with a lot of men. Um, I've learned a lot, high level in the airline industry, being around a lot of men, because that's the deregulation days, where you broke things up, took it apart, sold it, and kept what you want, and, and, and got rid of the rest. Um, I think at the end of the day, I'm kind of used to it. I don't, I've kind of adapted to it. I don't know what else to say to that, except that um, it can be, to me, I, I guess I'm used to it. So I kind of let it roll off my back and keep it moving. I've been in different environments where I've had to maneuver through the cracks, is what I call it. Make it through the cracks, and it's okay. I just keep going. I would totally agree with that. That's how I've managed to survive as well. But I have children, and my daughters tell me that I miss all of these, all of these cues. I think we're kind of conditioned because I've worked with. I was in math. I was a pro programmer before at Apple, so I worked with men my whole career, and I just adapted to it. It seemed normal to me. But honestly, I think we. We don't want to take it as normal. We want to, at least I've started to recognize when someone's not listening to me just because 
they're listening to my male colleagues but not to me. And or if I'm pitching to a VC, they're asking me these defensive questions instead of aspirational vision questions. So I'm starting to become aware of it and I think it's important that we become aware of it so that the next generation of women who comes into this space has a better experience then and doesn't have to adapt so much as we did. You know, that's a really good yeah, I'm sorry, let me piggyback on that. So when I say I've gotten used to it or just continue to move through the cracks with it, I think it's more than being aware. I think your behavior modifies as you go. I still need to make things happen as a project manager, industry level, running my own company. So more than awareness is necessary. But as you move through the cracks, you have to be in action. And you have to be able to manage the situation or modify it in a way, whether you go under, around, over, whatever, is like by any means necessary, I'm that girl, okay? It's gonna happen and I'm gonna get my result and it's gonna be at the level and quality with time and value that I want. You know, that question is one that we often ask and it's interesting to me because every time I see that question, you know, I do ask it, but for me, I haven't had those challenges either within this space. I, I, I just said on another panel, I think I was born with an extra dose of testosterone. <laughs> so for me, I have not had those challenges either. So it's exciting to see that more women are going through and that when we hear things like that from multiple women, then the, the newer generation that's coming in, then they come in and they don't expect it. But when you come in expecting it, then unfortunately you get what you expect. So yeah. I, I, I love what you ladies have said and the experience that you have had as well. So let me ask you this question. So what do you envision the, um, the future of the blockchain, especially as it pertains to the traditional business world? Bitcoin to 100K. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> That would be great, but what do I see? I think that someone in the previous panel said that industry is coming in right now. I see institutions poised on the brink of coming into DeFi, decentralized finance. I really think that uh, the next few years is going to see a huge influx of mainstream players, and we're going to see institutional capital coming in, and like I said, I think blockchain is coming. There's nothing that's going to stop it. It will adapt and modify over the time and become more usable, more easy to use, I certainly hope. Um, but I think it's coming. I think we're going to see a huge shift over the next 10 years. We won't even recognize how we do things today. I would agree 100%. I personally think that um, there's a lot of benefit that's already started with some projects and use case um, scenarios. You do have. Um, some nonprofits who have started using the DeFi, the unbanked, helping people with identity. Um, the nonprofit side does really well in the blockchain space, and a lot of those projects are doing um, fabulously well for what they're bringing to the table for society, for the undeserved, underprivileged uh, markets. I also see blockchain um, moving very swiftly to case uses in real estate, insurance, any place that you have transactions, um, especially on that DeFi, uh, smart contracts. Um, a lot of that's taking place now, but I think that's gonna pick up as people see that they can have an additional stream of income from a passive side every time there's a transaction, every time you sell the property uh, of artists, every time the, uh, the piece sells, they get a percentage, um, your bands, your music, and so on. Um, I think there's going to be creativity in society um, that's going to catch on that this is not all that bad and learn how to utilize the tools that comes to the table when you are looking at AI. If you don't catch on and start using it like Google or start asking it like a virtual assistant or start talking to it asking for your marketing plan and your drip campaign, and you will get left behind. So there's some positives. It's all not about the scary, and it's all not about the fear. 
and what's going to happen next. The best thing would be, I'm 68, um, but two years ago I did AI executive program just to know what was going on with AI machining and I didn't have any idea, not in the workplace, but I wanted to know. And I had the time, we was all locked in the house. So, because I got you see me walking around here with a mask on, you know, obviously I got some issues. So, <laughs> so I decided to do that with the virtual. And then um, this past year, I wanted to understand blockchain, crypto, and emerging trends and DApps and everything um, beyond what I was being told and engaged, you know, through counseling and working with a, a, a consultant. So at the end of the day, I think there's a lot that's going to really happen on the positive. We all need to hang on, join in, learn what you can, share, grow, and keep moving and make some money. Change the world and go home. Change the world and go home, she says. We're done. <laughs> so it's interesting that you say that. Say that. So I'm going to digress. I'm going to, um, what, is, what does GPS say? Um, recalibrate? <laughs> Whatever they say. So I'm going to go a different direction here because something that you said, you said last year you started to learn something different. So you were already in the space and you mentioned your age and you decided <laughs> to learn something different. And for me, that's exciting because I just got into that space as well to where I started to look and say, you know what? There's so many spaces that I am not um, knowledgeable in, that I'm not knowledgeable at a level that I can teach it. So just give us an example of how do you do that? How do you go from, you know what? I have no idea and then you wanted to go down this, this, this new road map for yourself to to learn something new again, it's completely and totally out of the ordinary. For me, um, I'm a learner. Strength Finder 2.0, learner was one of my top five. So that's part of how I move through the world. Um, I think for me, I've worked a lot. Everything I've accomplished or set a goal to, I had to figure it out, learn it, and be in maybe survival mode in a way during the times I came up. So for me, I mean, I basically, well, let me just throw this out there. At the end of the day, I've been learning because I got a master's in 2011. My master's in pastoral ministry. I'll be very transparent. Um, in 2019, I think I was just turning 65, I got my Master's in Divinity. I don't talk about it much because everybody ain't there. So, you know, I just go with spirituality and keep it moving. Um, so, when 2020 came and I saw an opportunity to learn machining and AI and data and analytics, I decided to go to Kellogg. Say, okay, let me check this out. They're supposed to be high ranking and all that in a bag of chips, so let me go get me some bag of chips. And uh, with everything it was going now, my business advisor and in that space, they thought I needed to step up on who I was back when, because they wanted to know what happened to you. What happened to your business that you're doing this? You know, even though I came out of corporate, I'm a corporate girl after 40 years. Budget, 177 million. Client list, 7.2 billion. So I done been there and done that. GetThere.com, you know, Saber, Priceline, Orbitz, those are my old projects. Reward programs, Priority Gold Chain, okay, you get the idea. So 2022 comes around, and I'm supposed to step up my game, do something with my business. What I was doing wasn't what I should be doing, and I'm listening to my advisors. So I decided, well, after I learned the NFTs and started doing digital art and then started worrying about Web3, this was the beginning of the year, I needed to go to class. But if you go, you do have to be in the mode of change. If you want your life to change, you can't keep doing things the same way, expecting a different outcome. Um, you can't keep working for these corporations and be like me and get laid off at 50 and having to almost be almost homeless in two years and can't get a job because you're overqualified and you got Enron, Tyco and all that happening. 
So different circumstances along my journey, I would not give up. And I got used to learning as a, as a way of a behavior to, first I liked it, but I think it was a survival mechanism of circumstances in my life. And I just tried to keep an open mind. Did I go too deep in that? You got it? You went perfectly. <laughs> I mean, you, you went to the right level of depth. <laughs> Thank I would, you. I'd like to take a stab at that. I. When you download a new game on your phone, because you're tired of the old one, at first, you're like, what is going on here? I don't, under I don't understand this game, I'm just gonna go with it. And then, at some point, it clicks in, and you're like, oh, I get it, I've gotta go collect the pumpkins, and then I have to deliver them over here, and it makes sense. Learning is just like that. You go into uncomfortable situations, and you get used to them. Well, let me add this on the blockchain. Let me keep it real. So, when I first heard about the blockchain and everything that was going on and smart contracts and the way the communication was going, I didn't understand a thing. Straight over my head, bam. But once I took the time and slowed down, just like a game, like you said, read the directions, really started thinking about it, and then I was able to apply it to my past and look at what was going on in my future and do a lot of reading. After time, it kind of came to me because it can be complicated. It's not you. Is them. It's the way they're developing it, the way they're talking about it, and the way they communicate with it, and it's a whole other generation, so they got their own little lingo jogging and everything else. In the meantime, we sitting over here wondering what the heck going on, and what's going on, and why is this, and why we ain't investing, and we ain't doing nothing. There you go. Wow, that's fantastic. So let me ask you ladies this. What advice would you give to young women they say young women, but I'm going to say to individuals in general that are aspiring for a career in the blockchain, they maybe want to dabble in it a little bit, they're thinking about it, they're pondering the idea. What advice would you give them um, to get started or to build a career? I would say, I think the time for having a career in blockchain, unless you're a developer, is past. We're no longer developing blockchains, we're developing applications for blockchains. So I would say, what are you passionate about? Build that, if it needs blockchain, you know, build it with blockchain, build it with privacy too. <laughs> but we, we have such a need for applications that use privacy, that use blockchain. So rather than thinking about, okay, I'm gonna do a career in blockchain, think about how you can use this technology to move your idea or your passion forward in the world and make a bigger difference, bigger impact with it. That's a great point. How about you, Don? I think there's always some space there somewhere for you to figure out your path on the consultant side where you're not going to be in the middle of it all, in the development side. Um, based on my exposure, let's say even at Berkeley, it was mostly men, but there's still space in there for strategists or people to understand so they can help businesses, entrepreneurs, nonprofits, and um, other sectors of businesses that need help in transitioning to Web3. Um, that whole pivot piece, transition and change piece is still an open market. There's a lot of confusion and they need help. And that's another thing that I saw as a path with my training background to be able to communicate to people how to utilize this so we can get mass adoption. Um, because without mass adoption, you do have some major, a major shipper and different companies that are investing in blockchain. But the masses don't know about it. So they don't know that they could probably have an improved supply chain with drugs that they don't have to worry about being tampered with. They don't know some of these big box stores are not buying into the shipper because they don't have to. Because the public has not pushed them where we go shopping every day on the retail side. We haven't pushed them in the masses. So for them to pay attention to the investment of the shipper from overseas that's getting the products to us in the supply chain that they made the investment and they not really getting the support maybe from other suppliers and shippers because they don't have to, because we didn't know. 
So I've learned that going to the academics, you know, for the six weeks, eight weeks, getting the certification, and you ain't gonna read it in the paper. And that's why I also did the podcast, so people would understand and know. Because there's benefits in this arena for the public, but the public don't know what they're missing and what the benefits are. So there's a gap of knowledge once again because of lack of understanding. We are not getting the products, the savings, the efficiencies that we should be as a consumer from the consumer side. And we've got companies that really with all the confusion really don't know the efficiencies, the operational, the scalability, the interoperability and things that could be doing for the better of society. You've got earthquakes, you've got climate change, you have a lot of society issues taking place that can be resolved in this space that have not been resolved because we don't know or people are not really investing where they should and we just got these little pieces of crumbs that we got going on for people to pick up as we go on versus a broadcast of information and everybody pushing it at the same time, which is why we have Breathe, and hopefully they continue. Absolutely. In the spirit of simplicity, I believe that we should make things dummy proof. I think that they should be so simple that you don't have to ask yourself a second time. So I'm gonna ask you a question I already know the answer to, but I wanna make it simple for anyone that might be watching this video. Is it too late to get in? Of course not. <laughs> it's never no, it. We're still early. At all. We're at the very beginning of this right. adoption curve, so now's the time. Oh, it's definitely. It's still, I'm just getting in. Look, I'm getting in at this age. I think, let me tell you this. Now, you didn't ask this question, but in case you listen to this video, and you retire, you don't have to be retired anymore because you remember you got AI. AI can help you think about this, okay? You can ask AI some questions, it's gonna give you an answer. You can say, please, can you fix that for me so it sounds more professional? How can I write this email? So there's no reason why you gonna be retired and have to go stand online and be a welcome person somewhere where you can go make you some money and do some other work that you have all the background and experience for. Like myself, I'm not the only one out here that got all this experience. This is a time to come out from wherever you are <laughs> and utilize the technology and get your coins and make some money. Let's do that. I think if we come out with this generation is doing all the development and they've got all the insight and they want to see a different environment and a different Web3 environment and the community and the tokens and the coins and the NFTs and how you're going to gamify. And if we come out from our generations with all the background and experience and the history and everything else and we join, then we make some mass movements and we can push everything where we want it to go and pull it through and follow up. Bitcoin to 100K. <laughs> 250K. <laughs> Well, thank you, ladies. You all have been an enlightened breath of fresh air. And I believe that it applies to all of us. But so that you know, this is a panel of women all over 50. And none of this is stopping us. We are going to 250K Bitcoin. So ladies, um, as we close out, can you tell everyone how to connect with, with you all if they wanted to get more information, if they wanted to find out about the nonprofit, your podcast, how, do, how does someone reach you? My information is up there, I think, so. You can, you can get to me at lisa at secret.network. And you can get to me at uh, Pivoting to Web3 Podcast if you're interested in being a guest in the Web3 space. And you can connect with me on connectwithdonnamitchell.com and we can have a discovery call and you can find me on LinkedIn. And I'm really glad to be here and have the opportunity. And thank you for moderating. Yes, thank you for moderating. Great job. You're very welcome, everyone. I am Decor Fortune Scott, aka DCA Fortune, and these here wonderful crypto streets. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to seeing you at the top of the blockchain.